In this first segment, Ray begins an introduction by giving his definition of service factor. He discusses at length the true aim of gear design and brings into focus the many, often conflicting, considerations of designing gears to meet specific customers' expectations. Cost, reliability, safety, liability, and the possible consequences of failure are just some of the factors that lay beyond simple service factors. All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Ray Drago, and this is my uh, 44th year in the business. So I've been uh, working on gears all of that time. I've never had any other job other than gear technology, so it's either the most boring career in history or uh, an exciting career in history, depending on the way you look at it. My uh, applications in gearing have ranged from toothbrushes and fishing reels to spacecraft and ballistic missiles and steel mills, coal mines, gold mines, just about anything that has a gear in it. Uh, one of my favorite things is I think everybody in this room probably owns a gear somewhere in your house or in your car that I've touched at some point in time. Uh, that's the variety of things that we've done over the years. Our purpose here over the next couple of days is to go over a subject called detailed gear design beyond simple service factors. Everybody's familiar with the AGMA ratings. I think everybody in this room at least is familiar with the AGMA ratings. You know, we calculate a service factor and we use that as a primary means for rating gearboxes. How, how conservatively is our gearbox rated? Well, that's all fine and dandy, except what's behind that? How do we do that? How do we optimize a gear? How do we get the most capacity out of it? You may be surprised to find out, for example, that the most critical gears in the world, those that we put in spacecraft, that we put in aircraft, uh, are not calculated that way. The service factor is not one, it's not two, it's not three. You would think that it would be a very high service factor in a critical application like that, but it's not. It's typically one or less than one in many cases by the conventional analysis. 